Welcome. I wanted to create a video just on what is the best cannabis accounting systems around and what I have learned in my over 19 years of experience in accounting. This is Sonia Luna, CEO and founder of Aviva Spectrum, and I'll be walking you through the elements of picking the right accounting software for the cannabis and marijuana industry. First and foremost, let's take a look at the evaluation process. I'm going to share with you the very typical evaluation process top tier consulting firms conduct. One is look at the design of the company, meaning what is going in and out in terms of processes and operations. Two is look at the plan. What's the scope of work that this company wants to achieve in terms of getting the numbers right from an accuracy and completeness stamp standpoint for accounting? And then look at the implementation program. What is the best implementation process for a company when it's a startup versus, let's say, they're um, a, a high growth uh, company versus a mature company? And then we'll talk about reporting, meaning what is the key reports that you'll measure, not only when you pick a software package for your accounting processes, but also what is the evolution of the company and what kind of accounting package would meet the needs, not only for current state, but future state. When I look at design, uh, here are a, a couple of considerations to take into effect, which is number of employees, meaning how many do you have? What's your growth pattern? Uh, employees versus contractors to the types of transactions and the quantity of them and then what are the unique sources of data that accounting needs to track and where are they coming from is it simply integrated uh, very seamlessly or is this something that you have to copy and paste and there's a manual process to integrate it with your accounting system the plan, what's the build out? So you have your current state of where you are in the business. What would the build out look like for an ERP package that you're thinking of buying if you grew, let's say 20% in the next, I don't know, year and a half? What policies would have to be adhered to if you really wanted to keep this ERP package and uh, let's say expand upon it and then upgrades. How do upgrades happen with the current ERP package that you have or one that you're selecting and how often do they happen? Implementation, it's not just a matter of going live, but how long does it take to go live when you are implementing a particular ERP package and also user training and I'll call it user conference or user community, et cetera. What that means is, is there really a, a, a sufficient base that if you select an ERP package, there's enough users in the community online that will help you when it comes to very specific questions. And then benchmarking. If you have a current state of your current processes and systems, is this ERP package going to allow you to benchmark, meaning where you were in your current state and then will that ERP packet show you your uh, benchmarking if you had set some goals so for example you have an ERP package and let's say you have a high volume of vendor payments that you are conducting if you had to add on let's say 20% more vendors would this ERP package be able to handle that with a nominal okay influx of human intervention in terms of getting those payments uh, done you could benchmark yourself saying hey by when I used an older package or when I did this manually I could see where I spent my hours investing in this in this ERP package and my growth pattern this is really going to save me a lot of time reporting it's not only budgeting and creating great reports for forecasting coming up with financial models that your banking relationships may want or let's say uh, external stakeholders like the board or audit committee may want but it's also for compliance and I call it also evolution 2.0 as you grow what I have noticed in most industries is you may start off offering certain services or products as you're selling them and then you may expand Okay, into other areas that are really in alignment with your core business and servicing your customer. Is this ERP package going to allow you to, for that growth pattern in that evolution of your business? Here's a slide that I prepared based on my own professional experience and I'm going to kind of tailor it to the very uh, basic overview. 
I put together a graph of what I've seen in terms of maturity models of companies. The basic premium and enterprise is what's, what you see on the top left. The basic is you're getting your basic accounting package. You, you may have one to five employees. Premium, you have between six to 10, uh, maybe 15. Enterprise is definitely well over 15 employees. You have multiple revenue streams, etc. What happens in your first two, uh, three years if you're within this pattern? And let's say you don't move up to a premium or enterprise type of company, okay, that would need a certain accounting package. You're probably going to need about two accounting sources, maybe four, depending on your growth pattern, of different types of software package to get your accounting done right. Now, in the premium, if you grow, okay, I'm just showing a different type of model, meaning you start off as a quote, premium person that needs premium accounting software packages. Your first uh, one to two, the two to three years, you're probably gonna need four different types of applications that plug in, feed in data sources, et cetera, to your accounting package. But once you reach year in your business, three to seven, you might be using about six different applications that feed into your accounting package. Enterprise, obviously, in our experience, they start off with something robust, meaning there's a CRM tool, there's probably some banking, very sophisticated banking point of sale systems that they've customized. There could be some inventory systems, et cetera, that fit the business model, and therefore they start off at a higher quantity of accounting uh, type of packages, or some of them call it industry-specific packages that feed into your accounting package. My point is not to alarm you, it's just to show you the scale of as you grow, it is very, very common for you to be adding on different accounting packages and I'll cover it in my next slide over here. Now, accounting system design. I'm gonna show with some of the bigger giants. This is not an endorsement of any one product here, but look, NetSuite has a pretty big online ERP package and it's got a great uh, reference point in the accounting industry. We've got QuickBooks Online, we've got Xero. There's Guardian, they have Roar, which is a more complete uh, ERP package in the cannabis industry. We have BioTrack and then we have an up and coming company called Grow One out in Canada that also uh, deals with some of the accounting treatments, et cetera, for companies. Now, that being said, I've yet to see a company that doesn't do what I call the connector, meaning they love an ERP package or an accounting package, and then they add on stuff because there's, I don't know, a heartburn area, uh, something that they feel like they're constantly putting a Band-Aid. And those connectors could be several things. It could be Gusto for payroll. It could be Bill.com for your vendor payments. It could be Expensify for reimbursement and flow, you know, creating a workflow for reimbursing your employees. It could be Fishbowl for inventory. It could be Fruit, fruit uh, Truly for forecasting and budgeting, etc. Again, this is not an endorsement. I'm just simply making a point that when you select a consulting firm, they should know the pros and cons, or at least help you, guide you in terms of the pros and cons of you've selected a package, but what's next in your growth pattern when it comes to year two, three, four, and five years down the road. You're probably gonna need some of these other connectors to augment the growth of your business. Now, add-on software benefit analysis. Whenever a client comes to us and they say, you know, I like this ERP or I like this accounting package and um, these are some of my pain points, I'd really like to invest in ABC add-on product, right? Uh, this industry-specific product. Our firm specializes in creating a add-on software benefit analysis. In other words, show me, we got to walk through together, how is this really going to reduce time for your current employees or contractors that you're hiring? To how, tell me, let's walk through this analysis on how compliance risk gets dramatically reduced, whether it's payroll related compliance, it could be uh, state and federal forms related to the cannabis and marijuana industry. And then the other is how reliable is this data? If we add on this software to a plugin, if you will, to this accounting package, because you feel it's better or robust, how reliable is this when I want to forecast or expand or budget 
for the business in terms of the financial model which you're going to need as a business owner. Now I wanted to share a little bit about me. Most of you have seen my YouTube videos. Some of you, this is probably the very first time you're ever seeing any of our uh, frequently asked uh, question type videos. I'm Sonia Luna. I'm the CEO and founder of Aviva Spectrum. I have been privileged of being appointed by the Securities Exchange Commission as an advisor in the accounting and auditing field, okay, compliance and yet I did have a strong accounting background. I actually served as an advisor and I would talk about my view, my experience and my customers, my clients experience. If there was a rule change that the SEC was considering, I would voice the voice of the smaller and emerging companies from the perspective of how would it, it would impact their accounting and auditing perspectives, okay? So in other words, I would, I would fly out to Washington, D.C., and I would advocate for the small guy. The committee I served was called the, smaller, uh, the Advisory Committee for Smaller and Emerging Companies. Um, I am an active uh, CPA with the California Board of Accountancy in California. And I wanted to offer to a select few, and I do mean a few, this accounting software analysis that I have personally created with my staff members. It's an intake process. You and I would get together, we would carve out time, and it would be very specific time. There would be an agenda. We would get together and really take apart what's going on in the business in terms of your accounting function, how you're getting those reports, those numbers, etc. After that meeting, we would come, uh, my team and I would come together and look at the accounting process review. In other words, how the flow of data is being processed, how many man hours, etc. And then we would give you a custom report. Now, why would we do this? Okay, and we would do this for free with me personally. Is our, it's really our way of giving back to the business community that's been giving us a lot of business. It's, it's also a way to promote our firm in, in a very emerging dynamic industry, right? Because once you get to know me, my team, et cetera, I have a very high level of confidence. You're gonna trust some of the findings that we have in this accounting software analysis report that we will customize for you. Now, if you're interested, please email us at info at avivaspectrum.com. You can also make sure that you put in the subject header accounting software analysis with your request. And if you'd like to call us, you can um, at our number. It's on our website as well, but I would highly recommend you email us and it's a way to get your customized software analysis with me personally if you email that with a subject header. I only do this twice a month. I do not block off my calendar for anything more than this type of analysis twice, more than twice a month. That's my limit. Um, I hope and I do encourage you to connect with us and please look us up on LinkedIn. It's a pro uh, professional website that highlights myself, my team, and you will find that I have the most recommendations written by CFOs, board members, audit committee members, and even external auditors about our professionalism and how my team conducts itself with customers. So I look forward to connecting with you soon and um, have a great day.